Rock and roll. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, so this is the Balik Proof Collaboration talk. And uh, we will talk about uh, how not to leak your data, like run Collabora online in some secure way. And um, when it comes to security in uh, Collabora online, then um, we really don't want to have some single point where we, we say that this provides security. We have a layered approach here. Um, we believe that uh, in case we have multiple layers and each layer is providing its own security, then combining these together is some very, very solid um, product experience. Um, so one layer is that the document data is held in your server. If you have your physical server on your server room, then your document is held there. Uh, also, we don't um, uh, send every um, uh, the document to every single device and um, then expose it to your browser and to your JavaScript debugger and so on. We mostly send pixels to the browsers. Um, and then uh, we have several additional layers. I will get into details there in a moment. Um, so if you would like to imagine or understand how this architecture looks like, on the left side, we have um, the users with their PCs uh, or mobile devices. And they have browsers, and uh, then they connect to uh, uh, the Collabora online server. Optionally, you may want to have some high availability balancer there. And optionally, you can have some monitoring, but let's ignore those two for now. So you, co you connect to Collabora online workers, and those are backed by some kind of file storage, a data store. Uh, we are talking um, a wopi like protocol between the, the data store and Collabora Online. So what we would like to protect is the, 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 um, the traffic between the data store and Collabora Online, and the, the traffic between Collabora Online and the browser of the users. Uh, now, why we want to uh, have some secure way uh, on the Collabora Online server side? Um, Collabora Online is based on LibreOffice technology, and it's a um, large community code, like 8 million online of C++ code. It's very hard to audit that by uh, like doing that manually. So what we want to do is that uh, we put most of the LibreOffice technology code to a jail, where it's much, uh, more, uh, it, it can do much less harm. Um, here is a chart showing that in each and every year there are security problems in the LibreOffice technology code. Uh, they get fixed and then they move on, but uh, we, we can't expect that, uh, that, um, that LibreOffice technology code will have zero uh, security problems um, next year. So we lock it down in some jail. Uh, we also provide VBA and Python script time, but it's something that uh, that's uh, disabled by default, uh, just to improve sec the default security. And in case your organization, your server instance, uh, would like to use this feature, then you can configure it to enable it with a warning or just enable it by default. Uh, I would like to give you a bit of visibility into how um, we handle security issues. We have a long process and not the full story is uh, presented here. But the point is that as soon as we, we are aware that uh, some security problem is, um, is reported, then we have a product manager who is uh, overseeing the whole process. We do an acknowledgement to the bug reporter. And then we have two engineers um, identified who will start working on fixing this problem independently. Uh, this has the benefit that um, uh, at the end we have uh, two fixes and then we can evaluate which one is the better technically. And then at the end of the process, this will get fixed. You get uh, updated builds. Uh, partners and customers get notified in time. And, by, and once everyone, uh, all the customers are upgraded to the newer version, then there is some public announcement. And then we can relax. Uh, if you would like to get notifications about this, um, I will get to that um, towards the end of the talk. Um, it, um, it's also interesting that um, we have physical and network uh, access protections for the build hardware, how Collabora Online is developed. So on the developer side, uh, we have a security policy in place. Uh, we require full disk and, and encryption and so on. 
Uh, on the built hardware, again, it's something, some physical hardware that we uh, host in the Cambridge office, not in some random cloud. Um, access to this is behind VPN and, um, and um, uh, access to these machines are not granted to everyone. It's, uh, it's given to the ones who actually need it. We have separate um, public CI and separate uh, physical machine for actual customer builds. Um, I would like to point out that for this large uh, community code, 8 million lines of code, we have a community service, uh, which is um, a, a very advanced static analyzer uh, that, that tries to find badness before it's, uh, the, the, the code is shipped to customers. And our default density there is near zero all the time. Sometimes something gets uh, reported, then, then um, the LibreOffice development community fixes this. We are part of that. But Red Hat is also doing lots of security work there. Uh, in this screenshot, it's a recent one. There were straight defects uh, that were eliminated, and we are now back to zero. Um, we also do systematic crash testing which means that we collect a problematic document, like the most problematic documents from bug reports from several bugzillas, and then we import those, uh, export them in various other formats. And this is like more than 100,000 uh, files. And we try to see like if there are any crash there, and if so, how we can fix that. And again, ideally, uh, do this on master so that before the, co the problematic code gets shipped to customers, it's already fixed. Um, we also do fuzzing, which is um, an interesting approach to building something secure in some lower level language like C++. We, in LibreOffice technology, we have about 50 different fast targets for various file format parsers. Um, in Collabora Online, we also have um, dedicated fuzzers for the admin console traffic, the WebSocket traffic towards the editing clients, and also how we talk to the data store when we get HTTP responses and parse that, that um, result. So exactly what is a fuzzer? There are multiple technologies there. What we use in Collabora Online is based on Clang or LLVM, it's lib fuzzer. Uh, what we have is that um, we have some known problematic input, which used to be um, crashing or using some undefined behavior in the, in the code. And uh, we, um, one, one thing we do is that we load this problematic input, and then we make sure that we now behave sensibly. And what we do is, is kind of some artificial intelligence there. It's, this is some evolutionary fuzzer. What it does is that it tries to mutate, mutate that input in some interesting way. And, in, and it's, it's watching the code coverage. So in case the mutation led to some more code coverage, uh, more source code coverage, and it found some, some interesting branch where um, that, that was not tested before, then it dives into that. And if that mutation did not lead to uh, some, uh, some more code coverage, then we will forget about that branch. So this, uh, this way we can quickly find uh, problematic um, code areas and we can do dedicated testing there. Uh, so to give you an example for the um, test case reduction, uh, how this works, once uh, some problematic input was found, then it will try to reduce that input up to the extent that uh, it's minimal. So it still reduces the problem, but, uh, but if you reduce this further, then the problem goes away. This is some two HTML samples. You can see that it's uh, not even that form, but uh, we should give some proper and clear error message when in uh, importing that instead of uh, saying that, sorry, your editing instance is restarting. So these were just the two minimal test cases that we found as part of the process. Another security feature I would like to mention is anonymized logging. Um, so in case um, you would like to replace sensitive uh, personal information with some, um, some um, unique ID, uh, this is basically a hash with some arbitrary sort, and then it logs only in the, the actual logs will only contain these arbitrary IDs um, instead of the personal um, sensitive information. So usernames and user IDs are obfuscated and protecting the identity of the users. And they are, these IDs are no, like the editing users are now isolated from the files that they are viewing or editing. This is all configurable in the WLD XML. Uh, this also helps you comply with the GDPR in case you need to. 
Then uh, I would like to give you a little visibility into how this digital rights management works um, um, on the Microsoft side. What they do is that in case you they want to share some encrypted document, then you do this encryption, then you um, you mail the encrypted document to some other site, and then there is this assigned um, whole architecture on the Microsoft side from the BIOS to the bootloader to the operating system to the desktop office application that uh, does the encryption. It's all backed by the Microsoft Cloud, and uh, the whole, whole stack is based on signatures from Microsoft deciding if you are a good guy or a bad guy. And if they don't decide it the way you like them, bad luck. So to break out from this um, situation, one um, very popular but quite questionable approach is that you have some server and you send the whole document to the browser, and then the browser does the security checks on the client side. And you can easily see that this is highly problematic because then um, in case you are um, you know how to use uh, javascript debuggers on the browser then you can easily inspect the whole document it's not real security so what we recommend and what we do is uh, the secure view well, where we mostly send just pixels to the to the editing browser and um, the actual document stays on the server um, you can um, decide what permissions you would like to give to the editing clients, if they want, if they are allowed to do editing, printing, sharing, downloading, and um, all you there can steal is just the pixels, which are worth the mark, and they are in documentized. So that's that's not uh, that's not that useful. Um, in case uh, you are wondering, like, like this is protecting the security between the online editing instance and the browser. But there is this other piece. Uh, what about you have your data store with your sensitive document and you are handing that out to some Collabora online editing instance. What about protecting the traffic between Collabora online and the data store? For that, um, that purpose, uh, we sign our WOPI uh, messages and um, you can verify this WOPI proof. Um, it's based on uh, public private keys. And if you do that, then you can be sure that the request coming from Collabora Online towards your data store is actually really coming from us. If you don't do that, then at least um, protecting um, the WOPI protocol on the firewall um, level is also a good idea. And to complement all these security efforts, we are also um, parent Collabora companies um, ISO certified in terms of in information security. And um, we expect to be also part of that. We also do annual penetration testing of the of the um, product code. So hopefully all that helps uh, to have a company who produces a um, secure enough uh, product so that you can uh, actually get the guarantee that you are hoping for. Um, this is the, the website where you can subscribe to, to security advisories, uh, primarily Collabora Online, but also Collabora Office, in case you are interested in that, and probably you should be interested in that, and please subscribe to that so that we can notify you in time. Uh, so to uh, sum it up, uh, we believe that a multi-layered security model is a good one for a um, complex product like Collabora Online. Uh, we try to do a lot of uh, proactive security work uh, so that um, in case security issues would happen, then they are found and fixed before we ship the problem in the product. Uh, we do um, uh, load testing, we do fuzzing, we do uh, a various automated tasks to find the security problems before the bad guys. And in case something goes wrong and there is a security problem in the actual release product, then we have a solid security process in, in, in place and we um, uh, notify everyone who actually signed up for notifications. For listening, and I believe later there will be some room for actual questions in, in case there are more. In, in case there are more. Thanks, Miklos. Great work.